Fear. It's such a simple word, but its interpretation can bend and change depending on who you are. Fear could mean spiders, clowns, heights, abandonment, the unknown. The list goes on and on, doesn't it? So let's get a little more specific. Now in this example, the things that terrify you most are manifesting into a vivid nightmare. Maybe you saw something move in the shadows, an imperceptible shift that shouldn't be possible. Or you heard light laughter from around the corner. You amble around in pure darkness, reaching for something, anything, that can act as a light or a weapon. But you find nothing. Or worse, you do find something, but it's attached to a creature that has long, jagged fingernails. It's stitched together out of shadows, slowly moving closer with each disjointed step. Its bright yellow eyes are focused solely on you. It reaches toward you, whispering your name. And then you wake up from your nightmare. You take stock of everything around you. Your bed, your pillows, your comforter. That painting on the wall that you got at a random yard sale. It's all there. You're safe. You're awake. But there's always that small part of you that wonders if you're still dreaming. After all, experiences like this aren't uncommon. Strange things have happened to nearly everyone you know. So you do your best to write them off as circumstance or oddity. Coincidence. Because surely there has to be some sort of logic to it all. And that logic wouldn't exist in dreams. You decide, finally, that you're awake. That you exist. But no matter how hard you try, you can't shake that thought in the back of your mind. You go to sleep every night wondering if any of this is real. Or if you're still caught in that same never-ending nightmare. And, thanks to a one-of-a-kind poker game, one unlucky soul knows exactly what I mean. The gold doubloon was the crown jewel of Checkpoint 15. This five-star resort and casino featured 35 floors, a magic show that promised to eclipse the great Harry Houdini himself, and an art collection that would rival the Louvre. Its gilded walls and self-refilling waterfall weren't the only noteworthy things that blurred the boundaries between reality and dreams. There was a certain part of the gold doubloon that you could only access if you had a very special piece of obsidian. The gold doubloon, you see, was relatively close to an underwater volcano. And the casino's owners made sure that each piece of glass had unique designs carved into the center of each token. These small treasures were usually reserved for high rollers, or whales if you wanted to put it into casino terms. But you know what I mean. People who had a lot of money to burn, and not a lot to lose. Of course, if you didn't have a fortune to spare, there were always ways to get a piece of that volcanic glass. Unfortunately, it came at a steep price. If you wanted to experience how the other half lived, you had to play a specific game. Well, that's not entirely true. The game wasn't the important part. The wager was. Like any respectable casino, the gold doubloon vetted all employees to ensure that their guests were always in fine hands. Their clientele expected the highest level of discretion, as did the casino's founders. Despite the secrets that surround the upper echelons of the hotel's operations, if you knew what to ask, well, well, you'd better be sure the answer to your question was something you wanted more than anything else in the world. Because the gold doubloon held more than a few secrets, and one of them, supposedly, was the key to immortality. It sounds far-fetched, to be sure. I've, uh... Well, well, I've spent time in a few casinos, both on the bridge and off. 
and I've never come across any secret rooms or blackjack games that could lead into turning into Dorian Gray. But let's say for the sake of, well, whatever, that it was actually possible. That's what the piece of obsidian was for. If you were unlucky enough to get a hold of one, all you had to do was go right up to one of those expertly picked employees, hand them the token, and say one very simple six-letter word. Return. Considering the prize was eternal life, it wasn't a word that could be said lightly. So, you gain entry into a part of the casino that shouldn't be there. A hidden set of rooms that are just slightly wrong. You hear someone crying close by. But when you turn to ask about it, you realize you don't have an escort. You keep going, relieved that the sobs seem to be fading away with each step. You pass the next room and see someone standing in a corner. They aren't making a sound, and you just caught a quick glimpse as you walked by, but you're sure that's what you saw. A light flickers overhead, but you keep walking, determined to reach your destination. You've waited so long for this, they're not going to scare you away with a few cheap tricks. And just as soon as you think that, you find the door. It doesn't look like much. In fact, it almost blends in with the bland white walls that surround you. But it doesn't matter, because you've found it. After years of searching, too many false leads to keep track of, and slowly dwindling hope, you finally found it! The room is dimmer than you imagined it would be. Not that it matters, really. Nothing will stop you from sitting down at that table. There's only one other person in the room, and he greets you with a wan smile. Vacant eyes. A suit that's definitely not from this decade. He doesn't ask your name, and you don't ask his. He begins to deal, and as the cards are laid out in front of you, a small thought screams out in the back of your mind. I'm not supposed to be here. This is wrong. It's not going to end well. But you push the doubts away. They don't matter anymore. Nothing does. The game doesn't last nearly as long as it should. You won. Too easily. The lights go out just as you realize this. Adrenaline rushes through your body as you sit there, tensed, waiting for something to happen. Instead, all you hear is a small, hoarse whisper. Thank you. And then the lights are back on. You're the only one in the room. You leave the gold doubloon, but you never wander very far. There are lots of rumors about what the winner really gets, or rather, what price they had to pay for it. Most people are sure of three things. One, if you play the game and lose, your memories will be erased. Everything you've ever experienced, everything that makes you who you are, gone. Just gone. Two, if you win, you live forever, but you can't leave the bridge. Three, if you win and leave the bridge, you'll remain immortal, but all of your memories will be erased. Everyone who plays knows these rules, and yet they make the choice to try anyway. You have to wonder when it'll stop. If there's someone out there who just, I don't know, shoulder the burden for everyone else, leave the casino forever. Make it impossible for anyone to find them. If that person exists, I sure as hell would like to meet them. Nightmares are full of the things you fear most. A shadow figure lurking just behind you. 
Laughter that rings out when you're all alone. Yellow eyes glinting down at you as you try to sleep. But for one unlucky soul out there, nightmare means something else entirely. A nightmare isn't some sort of otherworldly paranormal force. It's not the bogeyman hiding beneath the bed. Instead, it's their reflection. That thing in the mirror that used to be them, but isn't anymore. It's the gift of immortality. And the curse of being foolish enough to accept it. This mini-episode of The Bridge was written and edited by Alex Brown. It features Chris Martin as Roger. The music playing under tonight's gold doubloon adventure was composed by The Wind Beneath My Wings, Sarah Fairchild. Be sure to check out our website, thebridgepod.com, send us an email, or find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. As always, please rate and review us on iTunes or the podcasting app of your choosing. We hope you enjoyed your trip to the Atlantic Ocean's most infamous casino. Thank you once again for listening to The Bridge. In case you haven't heard enough of Chris's voice this week, here's an outtake from this (laughs) mini-episode. Uh, I said I'd do this all in one take. I was like, nah, I'm going to make this as minimal editing as possible for Alex. (laughs) Uh, Sorry, Alex. Alex.